Hello everybody, this is Brendan from CommonMotor.com, that's Common-Motor.com on the internet. Today we're going to be talking about charging systems, and this is our new rectifier regulator unit to fit all the Honda CB350s, 360s, 450s, 500Ts, a lot of the twin cylinder Hondas um, that have the, the single phase charging system. So we're going to talk about this unit. We're also going to explain a little bit more about how the charging system works in the bike because we get a lot of questions about it. So we're actually going to do some technical showing you the pieces, showing you what wires go where, and how you can get this guy installed on your bike to get maximum charging out of your electrical system. So our regular rectifier combo um, is CMC part number 3023. It comes with everything you see here, so the actual new unit and a... Uh, some connectors in case your wiring harness has been hacked up or you're making a custom wiring harness for your bike. So here is our, our basic charging setup on, you know, this one happens to come off a of Honda CB360, but again, the, the 350, CB450 are all really similar in how they go together. So this is our new uh, regular rectifier unit. It's a plug-in unit. It's designed to go into the existing wiring harness, and we're going to actually show you how you tap it in to your, uh, your system here. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, in case you don't have it, it does come with some extra connectors and pieces in case your wiring harness has been hacked up, whatever, so uh, it's a nice case needed, but usually you should be able to plug into the existing parts that are already there. I'm going to move this, we're going to get back to it in a minute. We're going to actually talk about the stator coil real quick so you get a better understanding of what's going on in the charging of these bikes. So this is considered a permanent magnet alternator meaning that the rotor here has a magnet in it. And you can probably see this in the video. It's a magnet, and this is what it helps generate the electric current. Uh, we can't control this. This is a fixed variable in the equation. Um, all we can do is optimize the stator coil right here. Now, when Honda spec these on the bikes a long time ago, they actually took this coil and they divided it into two halves. One half was running all the time. The other half was only designed to come on when the headlight kicked on. Well, we all ride with the headlight on and we want to get the maximum charging out of the system because the power that this guy puts out is pretty anemic and we, let's, let's try to squeeze the most out of it we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to combine both halves of the stator coil to make them be on all the time. And the way you can think of the halves is like one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So um, we're going to turn on both sides of the stator coil. So I'm going to move this guy out of the way. We're going to look a more closely at the wires here that come out of our, our connector for the coil. So there's four wires coming out of this harness here. Uh, the, the green and red wire, we're going to ignore. That's for the neutral switch. All we really care about is this white wire, the yellow wire, and the pink wire and how they relate to the rest of the system. So uh, the white wire is for one side of the stator coil. Uh, originally it was the one that only kicked on when you turned the headlight on. The yellow wire was the other half of the stator coil, AC output, that was always on. And the pink wire here is the column that joins the two halves together. Uh, the first thing we're going to do to get the most of the charging system is we're going to combine the white wire and yellow wire together to get the both sides of the stator coil on at the same time. So, so here would be our connector coming out of the stator coil into our connector on the wiring harness here and this is, uh, goes to the rest of the system. So we have our, our, our pink common wire, we have our, our yellow AC wire, and the white wire is also our, our AC wire. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine the white wire and yellow wire together. You can really do this anywhere in the system. It's actually pretty easy to do right here just on the other side of the coil. And that way, this activates both sides of the stator, and you can get maximum charging out of the system. So that's a, a, an easy mod you can do on any bike um, to activate the stators. And the reason we want to combine these two, not only to get maximum charging out of the system, is because this white wire was originally um, connected to the on-off switch in your handlebars. But depending on what kind of bike you have, uh, that may be hacked up or broken, or it may not have an on-off switch. So by doing this, we're ensuring that both sides of the stator coil are on, regardless of what type of handlebar switch you have for the to toggle the headlight on and off, because um, they're, they seem to be problematic with a lot of bikes. So 
It's all, that's the reason why we're combining it down here. So our new regulator rectifier replaces a split system where we had both an independent voltage regulator and an independent rectifier. Real quickly to summarize up what they do and how they look, because you're going to run across different ones on your bike, we'll go through them. This right here is the voltage regulator. It's this kind of little aluminum box with these two wings and bolt holes on it. Uh, the regulator's job is to keep the DC voltage about 12 volts. Ideally, you'd be putting out more than 12 volts to keep the battery charged, 12 and a half to 13. Uh, usually when you have charging system problems, this is the number one culprit, but not always. With the new unit, we actually take this and we remove it from the system, so you're gone. Uh, these over here are rectifiers. The rectifier's job is to turn the AC coming out of the stator coil into DC, which is what the bike uses. Uh, this is what I call the new style uh, rectifier, which is this kind of small looking little heat sink guy. It looks kind of like a heat sink you'd find like on a motherboard on a CPU. Um, that's the uh, new style. The old style is this kind of larger orange finned guy. Um, showed up on some of the older bikes. You could run into either one of these on your bike. Um, they both do the same exact thing, they just look different. Also, some of the earlier bikes, some of the bikes in the 60s, um, don't even have a voltage regulator. So if you don't find one on your bike, it may not be there, especially if your bike's like a 68 on back. Um, this tends to show up later. So basically, we're going to be removing, so we have this guy. We're going to take him out, and we're going to take either one of these out of our system and replace it with our new unit. So we're actually going to go zoom down a little bit and show you some wiring um, things that we've drawn up. So our first step is we're going to remove the voltage regulator from the system. And what we've done is we've zoomed in on these are the three wires actually coming out of a voltage regulator. And then here are the three wires that would turn into ideally into the wiring harness. Uh, the green is ground because all green wires on the Hondas are ground. Yellow is going to be your AC coming out of your stator coil. And the black is 12 volt positive. And so we're going to unhook this from the system. So this guy is removed. The ground wire, you can do nothing with. You can leave it by itself. The AC wire, you're going to have to cap this off somehow to keep it from touching anything. So that lead you want to cap off and tuck back into the harness. And we're going to come back to this um, 12 volt black uh, positive wire in a second because it's crucial with our new, our new voltage regulator. So um, keep him open uh, for the time being. All right, so now we're looking at the, the regulator connection on the bike. Uh, this actually right here is a, a real regulator connector out of a wiring harness. We've snipped out the bike and we have a couple color wires. We have a white, I'm sorry, a red with white stripe, a yellow, a green, and a pink. And I've represented that over here in this photo, in this kind of sketch. So I'm gonna take him out of the equation so we can see what's going on. Um, ideally, this is our cord from our, our, our old rectifier. We'll unplug it and let's talk about what those four wires are. Uh, the red and white wire is the 12 volt positive to the battery. Yellow again is AC. Uh, we've seen that a couple times now. Um, the pink is our our common wire coming out of our uh, out of the stator coil. And again, green is ground, the chassis. So on our new unit, we unplug the old, rectif the old rectifier. So here comes our new one. It should just be a plug in place connection without any hassles. In fact, I'm gonna, here's an old one. It's just a plug-in. Just make sure you line up the right wires. Let's see, the red here at the corner, red at the corner, yellow, yeah. It's just a straight plug-in for the rectifier. Um, if you don't have this, that's what we have the, the extra connector that comes with the unit. And then this lowly black wire here, he gets connected here. He taps into the 12 volt positive of the um, voltage regulator. And that runs the regulator, that runs the voltage regulation. Um, the other alternative is you can actually attach this to uh, 12 volt positive if you wanted to. You could actually merge this wire with the the red wire here, but ideally this is the better one to tap off of in the system. So um, either way works, but I, pr I would prefer to, to tap it into the, uh, the where the old voltage regulator tapped in. And that's it. Uh, the rest of the thing would be just to, to take your new unit, bolt it to your frame, and you're done. You've now upgraded the charging system on your Honda CB350, 360, 450, 500T, uh, any of the bikes that had this um, permanent magnet single phase charging system.